Let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of the Amen. Veni Sancti Spiritus, repletuorum corde fidelium, et tui amoris in eis in macende. Emite Spiritum tuum et creabuntum. Oremus, Deus qui corda fidelium, Sancti Spiritus, illustrazione da cuisti, da nobis in iodem spirito recta sapere, ed eius semper, consolazione gaudere per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Ok, February 12, 2021, the Gospel comes from St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. <coughs> Jesus left the district of Tyre and by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. I want you to pay attention to what Jesus does next. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears. Should sound familiar, right? It's like Ava always wanting to touch the ears. <laughs> Jesus put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Okay, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them, not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. So if you paid attention to the narration of how our Lord performed this miracle, I want us to focus on a few points, right? Number one, he wanted to perform the miracle away from the crowds. That doesn't seem very characteristic of Jesus, right? He would normally perform the miracles in plain view of everybody. Immediately, I can recall only another, one other miracle which he did uh, more privately, like when he raised that little girl uh, from the dead. He asked everybody to leave the room and he performed the miracle just with a girl in the room who was lying there dead where everybody was already crying and mourning, right? And this perhaps would be the only other incident I could recall where our Lord took this dumb and mute uh, deaf person uh, away from the crowd. And then does what might be so uncharacteristic of our Lord, who is supposed to be, you know, the exemplar of virtue and polite behavior, right? All of a sudden, he does something that seems to be out of character. And what is that? The way that he performed the miracle, he put his finger into the man's ears and spitting. Yuck! Right? Spitting where and at what? And, you know, why? Maybe is the more important question. Why? Does, does, why is it important? That, why does St. Mark have to put that detail that our Lord had to spit? Maybe he spat on the ground or whatnot. And, um, you know, it doesn't go into more detail. Um, but then after spitting... Where did he spit on? Did he spit on his fingers? And then, and then, what was next? He put his fingers, okay, and touched his tongue. Touched the man's tongue. 
nowadays with the with everything happening about COVID around us, <laughs> this is a no-no, right? And maybe you can say even that, well, under even under normal circumstances, nobody goes around uh, doing such things as, you know, just spitting around and then just holding somebody's tongue. But, <laughs> uh, but I think this is a very significant detail that St. Mark allows us to, to have a, to have a, you know, a, 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 an appreciation of what could this mean as far as applying this whole kind of scenario to our lives. Okay. Um, remember that there's nothing, no line in the Bible is insignificant, right? No line or word in the Bible is insignificant. So we would perhaps be hard pressed to think what would be the significance of this particular scene in this kind of a miracle that our Lord is performing for this man. Well, I'd like to think that, you know, this is an image of many things that we don't understand in our lives. Okay? Imagine this man who was being pulled away by, by God, by Jesus, from the crowd. Perhaps he could not understand. Say, where are you going to take me? What, what are you going to do? You know, why, why do we have to go? But he didn't complain. He just went along. Right? He went along. And then Jesus touching his ears. Well, that's one of the most uncomfortable things you, you would experience. Right? Especially from somebody you don't even know. You know, right? A stranger to you all of a sudden comes up to you and touches your ear. Well, you know, if that was done to me, maybe I'll feel, oh, wait a minute. What's, what are you trying to do? Right? I'll feel uneasy. And even worse, you spit right in front of me. And then now, now you want to touch my tongue. You know, all of the so-called uh, uncomfortable situation all around this miracle is happening to this man. But you know what? He didn't complain. He went along with what Jesus was trying to do to him. He cooperated with God. And it just tells me that, you know, in our lives, there's so many of these kinds of things that we experience. That God leads us away from what is commonplace for us from our comfort zone, being with people, for example, and takes us away and puts us in a situation which can make us uncomfortable, puts us in a place where we can't understand what's happening and we can't understand why we are experiencing the things that we are going through. And, and our tendency would be to question God. Our tendency is to ask why. Why is this happening? And why is this happening to me? <clears throat> well, you know what? Here's the lesson. God sometimes draws us apart. Sometimes does things with us. Allows us. To go through certain circumstances of our lives that may confuse us temporarily. That may unsettle us temporarily. And He may even allow so many quote-unquote weird things, uncomfortable, unfamiliar things to happen to us. Because in His wisdom, which is far more infinite than our very limited intellect to even grasp and understand, He wants to perform a miracle for us. He wants to do something great for our benefit, for our souls. And this is one important lesson of faith and of trust. We have to have faith and trust in the wisdom of God. In God's way of 
arranging our life so that the best of us would shine, would come forth. Okay? And there will be plenty of these kinds of circumstances in your lives as you're growing up, as you go through the journey of life. There'll be plenty of these things that you will not be able to understand immediately. Just like this, this man, right? I guess he couldn't understand what Jesus was trying to do to him. But in the end, all he had to do was cooperate. And boom, the miracle. All of a sudden, he can talk. All of a sudden, he can hear. All of a sudden, his ailments that he has been suffering from for years was cured. And he was normal now. And what does he do? What does he do with his, with his good fortune of having received all of these graces from God, the good gifts from God? What does he do? He goes out to proclaim the majesty of God to others. He goes out and announces to everybody the good fortune that he just had. He shares the blessings that God has wrought in his soul and in his, in his own life. And he goes out and shares it with others. Why? Because that's the nature of grace. Whenever we accept and receive grace, we cannot contain it in ourselves. It just has to come out. We just have to share the goodness of God with others. We are too small a vessel to be able to contain the greatness and the magnitude of the glory and, and, and good that God gives us. That it just spills out and we have to share it. Despite the fact that Jesus prohibited him and the others not to talk about it. Yet what do they say? He has done all things well. And because he has done things well, even for us, for all of us, for each and every one of us, he always does well. And what is our way of giving thanks to God? Well, Let's make use of those graces that God gives us. Let's not waste them. Let's use them and use them to do good. Use them to manifest God's glory and greatness to others. Like what this man did. He didn't stop and say, you know, thank you and I'm happy now and this is all for me. No, he could not contain himself that he had to go out. And speak about Jesus and about the miracle to everybody else. Because as the phrase says about good, bonum es diffusivum sui. Right? The good diffuses itself. The good spreads itself. And we are the instruments for the diffusion and the spread of the good that God does to our souls. So remember... When we are faced with uncomfortable, unfamiliar, challenging, difficult situations. Remember, God is in control. Go with the flow and let Jesus work his miracle in our souls. Let us not question the wisdom of God. Let us rather try to discern and understand the will of God for us at every moment. And cooperate with that grace cooperate with God and we shall be the biggest beneficiaries of miracles big and small especially the miracles that God wants to work in our souls but he needs our cooperation he needs us to go along with the plan just like this man did and even if he didn't understand what was going on even if he felt uncomfortable and yucky with what Jesus was trying to do to him, he cooperated with Jesus. He went along with the plan and did his part. And what was that part? It's just to cooperate, to allow Jesus to work on him. Okay? That's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. And have a good weekend ahead of you. We hope to see you again next week. And let's see if Ava is going to say goodbye now. Will you? Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Say bye-bye to everybody. Bye. Okay, let's have
Have fun. Bye. Bye.